Hello, this is Samuel Thewlis with the Physics Focus. And today we're going to look at the SUVAT equations, what they are and where they come from. Now, before we start, it's worth noting that the official name for these equations is actually the equations of constant acceleration, which is worth bearing in mind because that tells us when we can use them, when they apply. They only apply to situations where you have a constant acceleration, because of course you can get situations where the acceleration is changing and you can't use these equations. Just bear that in mind for future reference. Now, what are the equations? Why SUVAT? Where do they come from? Well, these equations refer to a situation where you have an object, like, for example, here is my car, and it is travelling initially with a velocity of u. The car accelerates with an acceleration a, and at some later point Here is my car again. It is now travelling with a larger velocity, presumably v. All of this takes place during a time period t. And while it's doing this, it manages to travel a distance s. Now that s is technically what we call the displacement. It's the difference in position, the distance from its initial starting point here to its finishing point here. So, you might already be beginning to guess why, where the SUVAT comes from, by the way, looking at these letters. Because we have displacement s, initial velocity u, final velocity v, acceleration a, and time t. There you go. Now, as for the equations, there are actually five of them. And the first one that we're going to look at is this. What is acceleration? What do we mean by acceleration? What's the definition? Well, acceleration is increase in velocity divided by time taken. Writing this out as an equation gives us A equals increase in velocity is the difference between the final and the initial velocities over time taken. This is normally rearranged and written V equals U plus a t. Sorry, that's an a. That is equation one. Now, if you think back to GCSE level, distance equals speed times time. The distance travelled equals speed times time. Trouble is, 
we don't have a constant speed here. We're starting with a velocity of u to the right, ending up with a different velocity of v. Obviously, either of these might actually be going to the left, in which case it would have a negative value. We're putting it in as positive going towards the right. So, that said, we can't talk about just the speed. What we need to talk about here is the average speed times time. This gives us the equation distance s equals average speed. We start with u, we end with v. The average of two values is add the two together, u plus v, divide by the number you have, 2, multiply by time. This gives us equation 2. Now, looking at these two, if we take the first equation, v equals u plus at, and substitute that in for v here in the second equation, we end up with s equals u plus v equals u plus at, so u plus at, all divided by 2 times t. This equals so on the top now we have u plus u, so that's 2u plus at, multiplied by the t, so I'll put that in there, t and t squared, divided by 2, equals 2ut divided by 2 is just ut, at squared divided by 2 is a half a t squared. S equals ut plus a half a t squared. Equation 3. Now, if instead of doing that, we'd taken this first equation here, equation 1, and rearranged it to give t equals v minus u over a. That's just taking equation 1 and rearranging it. That's not a new equation at the moment, just a different form of equation 1. Take that and substitute that into equation 2. So now we have s equals u plus v, or I'm going to put that the other way around, v plus u over 2, multiply by t, which we are now substituting, v minus u over a. This can now be substituted, this can be rearranged, multiply by the 2, multiply by the a, so on the left we get 2as equals v plus u, v minus u, which is the difference of two squares. Multiply out the bracket if you're not familiar with this, and you'll see that that works out, simplifies down to v squared minus u squared. Again, this equation is usually rewritten in the form v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And there we go, we have a fourth equation.
So what about equation number five? Equation number five is not normally taught in textbooks or in fact in many schools. I quite often come across people who've never heard of it. But it's worth knowing for the sake of completeness. For equation three, we substituted for v. We took v equals u plus at. If instead of that, we took equation 1 and rearranged it as u equals v minus at, and put that into equation 2, equation 2 then becomes s equals u, which is v minus at, sorry, at, plus v, that v there, all divided by 2, times t, which equals v plus v, so we've got 2v, minus at on the top, all divided by 2. Simplify that down, or multiply by the t, so that's 2v t minus at squared. 2 cancels down, so we end up with vt minus a half a t squared. So s equals here ut plus a half at squared or s equals vt minus a half at squared. That gives us equation number five. That's the one you don't always meet so often, but you have five equations. And a point worth noting, we start here with five different quantities, s, u, v, a, t, we have five equations, and running through them quickly you will note. Equation number one here, v equals u plus at, doesn't have s in it. No s. s equals u plus v over 2 times t, doesn't have a in it. s equals ut plus a half at squared, no v. v squared equals u squared plus 2as, no t. And s equals vt minus a half at squared, no u. So five equations, each of them containing four of the five letters, each of them leaving out a different one of the five. And this is really useful when it comes to working out different uh, situations, depending on what information you know, what you've been given, and what it is you want to find out. And we'll look at that another time. Samuel here. Thank you. Bye for now.